Oh shit! Welcome to Meltdown Comics in Hollywood, California. Harmontown is now in session. Spencer Gregman, your dungeon master. Spencer. And the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So I, uh, I, I, I threw out my back yesterday. For real? Yeah, and uh, I, I, it, was, it, it hurts a lot, and uh, it's hard to walk. And uh, today, Erin drew a bath for me, and she uh, – it's my wife, Erin. She uh, – <laughs> it wasn't it – wasn't, uh, Aaron Sorkin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I asked him, but that's a better story. Yeah, I mean, his, I, I just, yeah, his, his, his take on it would be too dramatic, <laughs> what, what, too, too clever. What, what, so just what, draw me a bath. What, what would an Aaron Sorkin bath look like? You think? I, it, it, like? Would, it would be, it would be ironic, you know. It would be like, it would, it would, it would have a picture of a desert above it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I improvise what Aaron Sorkin's style is. I, um, the uh, so she she runs me a bath very nice for she puts all these Epsom salts in it for things maybe this will help your your bad back uh, and I and, and and she's like do you want me to put some music on I said yeah just put some, you, you put something on and she puts on you know probably probably in a genuine attempt to make me feel comfortable uh, not mockingly she puts on nineties alternative hits. Uh, <laughs> It says a like hey a station. Ya, hey, yeah, um, hey, yeah. The uh, so, so I'm listening. I'm like, oh, this does make me comfortable. It's '90s alternative hits. It's me soothing my my back and some Epsom salts. And then it's like it's like a radio station. So then the and then the commercial on the radio station for the '90s alternative hits is for a hospital that specializes in hip pain. <laughs> And that's a that's a real actual thing that happened today. <laughs> this is sitting there in the in the tub. And then another thing that made me feel old, but in a good way, was I watched uh, Kung Fury. Did you see this thing, Kung Fury? Yeah, that was another that was another uh, Woody in Toy Story moment for me. Uh, the the box opening and Kung Fury coming out, and uh, me going, oh, I'm I'm retiring now. <laughs> It's kind of not to be. Presu- I guess that's very presumptuous of me to say. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of talent, and passion. You got to check it out. It's very great. It's like 25 minutes of just nonstop passion for the 80s, and I would I would never have clicked on it, you know, because there's been so much hack shit that has like, you know, Kung in the title and like for it just sounds like something you probably nine times out of ten. Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just, it's just too much shit. Somebody sends me a video and goes like, oh, you should, you should watch this. It's called Kung Fury. I'm not going to I'm, – I'm not. I just – I did it because of my bad back, really. I couldn't do anything else except watch stuff, so I clicked on it, and then I was just drawn in, and it's, it's, it's really, really good. You should, you should, all you have to do is give it 30 seconds, and you'll, you'll, you're either going to watch the full 25 or not, but it's, it's really good. It was kind of a coming of age day, I think, for that reason. Because it's very, it's like, it's like a celebration of 80s VHS direct to video kind of action films. And, but simultaneously, it's like taking advantage of today's technology. It's, it was, it was kick started by someone who appears to be probably a younger man. Uh, I've never seen him before. <laughs> it was kind of like, like, it just felt the obsolescence, my obsolescence emanating off of this thing. Like, like I was, I texted Schraub and said, like, Man, I'm really glad this guy uh, waited to show up until after you and I were validated. Like, uh, <laughs> because I, if I had been in the break room at Target and seen that, I would have gotten in my car, driven to the desert, stopped at the first cow skull, <laughs> and just gotten out and just started walking. And it would have, it would have, and I would have either would have faded down on me walking, or I would have just dissolved like Ice Cube and Boys in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I died, I guess. Ice Cube died, right? He, that's why he faded away. <clears throat> is, there a, is that a yup? Is that Dave Klein? Hey, Dave Klein. How I was you? right. It was Dave Klein. He brought his yups to the... Dave Klein row. is sitting uh, in, the, in the sweet spot where the camera for the home listener, one of them is pointed right at Dave Klein. Oh, that's right. It's a Klein cam. <laughs> 
Dan, Dan, under what circumstances did you hurt your back? I don't. I think I was just like it takes very little. Like I, 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 I I've had a bad back since I was seventeen. Like I, I, I come from a long line of bad backs, and <laughs> I, I do. I mean, it's, everyone in my family has a fucked up back, and uh, like it, 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 it's. I'd pick it off of a list of things that could be fucked up about me. Like I don't want asthma. I don't want like certain <laughs> allergies. I don't. I'll take a bad back, but it's it's like, it's it's. You know, it makes it really hard to do physical labor. That's the big downside. <laughs> Boo hoo. <laughs> uh, but it, sometimes I, I, if I do too much twisting and bending, and I was rearranging my office, and I just, I think I just did a certain combination of things, and then I tried to get on my like inversion table. I have this like Michael Keaton gravity boot thing that I, <laughs> that usually like knocks it out. But this time maybe I did it wrong or something, and then I got, I was like, ow, 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 ow. And I couldn't even play video games. It hurt so bad. Oh, my God. Because that involves you, sitting up. You, and could, you couldn't sit down? I can barely be standing here. I'm a hero for standing here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see a firefighter do this. Take some time off his jeans-stealing schedule. <laughs> These guys can't stop stealing jeans. That's, that's why they become firefighters. They're like, mmm, free jeans. If you're a firefighter and this is your first episode, it's a callback. <laughs> I don't believe you stole jeans during 9-11. <laughs> I know that's an urban myth. It's an urban myth that entertains me. I'm calling back to the joke. There's also know. an urban myth that firefighters come to our podcast. <laughs> There's, uh, or they're, you know, they're out there watching on their little fireproof laptops. Or... <laughs> have you seen the Have you seen the Little Caesar commercial where the little, <laughs> little, little Little Caesars has this ad for this guy? This is related to laptops. Little Caesars has this guy because Little Caesars is doing this campaign where they're trying to convince you that that they're ordering their pizza is easier than ordering online. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing these commercials where it's like, yeah, I can't, oh man, this is so much easier. Like they're vilifying the process of ordering pizza online. It just seems, I mean, it's, a, I don't know. How do they think that that's going to, so, so one of the commercials I was saw today, because I have a bad back, so I was just watching Key and Peele all day and watching these shitty commercials. And like the guy, there's a guy who goes like, hey, can I get, can I get two pizzas? And his hands are below the counter. And uh, and she goes, yeah, that'll be whatever, fucking ninety nine, whatever. And he goes, uh, thanks. You have no idea how much easier it is than ordering online. And he lifts his hands. Now his so so he's lifting his hands, and both of his hands have been thrust through the backside of computer monitors <laughs> on laptops because it wouldn't read otherwise as a laptop. The idea is he's been so frustrated with his computers and such a pussy that he had to sneak up on him. <laughs> it's like, I'll be right back. Uh, no, it's because obviously they're in the production meeting and they're like, oh, but it's all laptops just look like slabs of nothingness from behind. Oh, well, what if we'll just turn around? Can we just, uh, Julie, can we just turn around? Yeah, yeah, just give me a second. We'll turn around. Uh, and then the, 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 like nobody was like the actors like I don't fucking care I'm in a pizza commercial I already want to kill myself I, 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 I'm not going to argue with these people I'm not, I'm not going to be the, the actor that had to do a pizza commercial and was high maintenance about it <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to do this and I'm going to get out of here the idea, the idea being that he, he, he tried to order online and I think he, it, his hands went through a computer well because I'm assuming that the idea is that he was trying to order a pizza online and couldn't <laughs> And then he and then he told his computer to turn around so he could <laughs> look over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe, or, I mean, the idea is that he would have punched in frustration, but it looks like his computer was so ashamed that it couldn't order pizza for him <laughs> that it it went down to the river like Lenny in of Mice and Men, <laughs> and he and he sympathetically, euthanistically, dispatched it, and he's just saying to the lady like it's much easier to go through Little Caesars. And then, it, so, so then during Key and Peele, which is awesome, I saw a bunch of Key and Spiel, Key and Spiel uh, Berg sketches that I, that, that, that I have. I, 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 this is nice when you go through a spate of not watching Key and Peele. You get to catch up with a lot of... It's a funny those guys show. really go for it's it. A very, 
Um, we should we should have one or both of them on the show. He said he said flagrantly. <laughs> yup, we got yep, a yup on yep. that. Do we have a yup? <laughs> the yups have it. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's got to be. It probably has to be one of them. They hate each other. It's uh, they, they won't work together. No, that's kid and play. Oh, that's right. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Uh, the uh, no, but they did. Uh, they did. They did. Uh, they did voices. Wait, wait, was he right? Did you, did, you, did you confuse kid was, and play with no that was the you, joke? You, maybe you just confused my joke for realsies. <laughs> you're, you're seeing double, and one thing is a, the, the the joke and, and for realsies are separate, and because so, you're seeing double, so you're looking at the for realsies. <laughs> focus on the joke, the joke half of of your vision. Uh, <laughs> The uh, they did voices for uh, for for Rick and Morty, which I, I Adult Swim did, didn't want us to talk 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 about the uh, all the all the guest voices, but like twenty percent of our second season is leaked online, so you already know that they did voices. Um, unless you're one of these wonderful people who, and I don't even, I mean, I appreciate the sacrifice. I think it's a the, people are tweeting me going, I, the episodes are leaked. The two episodes that we sent out to press are leaked of Rick and Morty, and I'm not going to watch them until the Woo! date. Uh, I, I'd be with you, I think. I, I mean, I know, but I, I also don't. I don't. I don't fault anybody for doing it, but I will. I, and I don't care about the politics of it. I just. I, I would just say, from from on Justin's behalf, that like we'd rather be finished with the episodes when you watch them, and we'd rather you see them and with the sound mixed and stuff like that. We're doing it for Justin. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Um, and there was another commercial during the during the Key and Peels. Uh, t- so okay, so all right, so I'm 42. So a lot of this show is about me being open and honest about my racially obsessed 70, uh, 70s upbringing, the brain that's resulted in like I'm struggling with with a post uh, post racial uh, uh, millennial generation, and I'm not. I'm, 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 I think the second half of a proper life should be spent realizing how wrong you were for the first half. I, I, and I'm loving it. That's what this show's about to a large degree. I'm going to therapy now. You heard me swear off therapy. And I, I'm never going to like giraffes. But like, <laughs> but, but so I'm, I'm confused about this one. Um, so I'm watching Key and Peele, and then this McDonald's commercial comes on. I thought, I, thought, I thought we stopped doing this. I thought this was like an 80s... 90s thing and then we got embarrassed about it the transparency of it and stopped doing it maybe this is maybe maybe this is post now now it's like well why not do it it's just like we're still doing the rapping all black people mcdonald's commercials the separate (laughs) but equal mcdonald's commercials uh, (laughs) where it's it's just all black people and it's on the the announcers black and everyone's black and everyone's unified by blackness and loving mcdonald's and and I, I can't figure out how I feel about it anymore because we used to unilaterally go, well, this is ridiculous. This is a holdover from a time when we thought that, you know, uh, like that race separated people and that advertisers were catering to it. And now, now I have no idea how to feel about it because they're clearly like, I mean, they're young and beautiful. And if I was part of a stereotype that that, that made me like l- look sexy and 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 have a good time all the time while I was eating my cheeseburgers, and I saw the commercial, I might go like, well, now I want a cheeseburger. Now that you're telling me white people like do their white thing, and part of being white is looking good and j- j- jamming out and like. It's just like it comes out. It's like it's like two fifty for a burger and fry, double 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 fry fry, double double fry, and, it, and uh, it's it it makes no bones about it. It's not disguising it anymore. It's like it's back to the eighties. Like eighties was like that. It was like they would just have a commercial. It was just like. Like, it was just fucking like crazy. It was like, yo, you want to get a Burger King Whopper? A Whopper, if you please? I want a Whopper Whopper with all my cheese. Uh, uh, I like, like, and it was just, just black people just biting into burgers, and they're just like, huh. And it's just like this elephant in the room. It's just like, hey, your race is different, you, but you should buy our product anyway. And, and so then I think in the 90s it got a little more subtle, maybe. Um, <coughs> Someone told me about. And have, have you seen this commercial? I, 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 I think we must have talked about this commercial on this podcast. The Coors, I think it's a Coors Light commercial. The silver, the, the silver bullet people, right? So there's this commercial. We had to have talked about this. The uh, the, the the commercial opens up. This is the 21st century that this commercial is. 
the, there's a there's like courthouse steps or like they're just like a skyscraper steps and a multi-ethnic like uh, group of young executives comes out and they're like they just finished work and they're all in suits and they're like kind of congratulating each other on a job well done f- for capitalism that day and <laughs> and the Asian lady walks off and like 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 the white guy goes his way and the, the and uh, there's probably a latino guy although they they you know we're lagging there but uh the 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 at any rate the, we follow the black guy the handsome young black executive and he goes and, he, and then it goes to a special train station that he goes to and the, and 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 there's i think it's all black people on the train platform and then the Coors Light Silver Bullet train pulls up and it opens up and inside is a crazy black party <laughs> On, on like a Buck Rogers set, it's like with dry ice and like holograms and just all black people just grooving out, drinking Coors Light, and he gets in it and it just goes away. And it's like, you're, you're hey, you're black, you have a secret life, make our make our beverage a part of it, like why not? Um, how, 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 how do we? How do we feel about this? If you're, I mean, I guess it's not how do we feel about it. It's how, is, how does the it sounds, average... It sounds like those commercials targeted strictly at an audience. It goes like, yeah, you're a black guy. It's cool to be a black gal or a guy. Like, like eat a cheeseburger, have a, have a Coors Light. We certainly don't want to live in a world where anything's against the law, but I just thought, we're just talking about like what's... Could, could there be a commercial where... What's respectful? Where, there should be a commercial where, a, where the, the, the black guy leaves the multi-ethnic uh, capitalist, goes down a secret train platform, gets on the all black dry ice train and then a white guy gets on the train and, uh, and everyone's like oh and everyone's, shit everyone, everyone stops for a second and then he holds up a Coors Light and they're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly I, I, I think it, and it's like what, what's the messaging there it's, 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 well, the, the, well, it's we all, know it's you all know all about the black secret lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> Make this beverage part of it. Yeah. And so their slogan is Coors Light. Is he cool? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, um, the funny thing is that as a TV writer, the, the, the line seems crystal clear to me. Or No, the line doesn't seem crystal clear to me, but it's, I'm, I'm more forgiving of that when it's not in advertising, I guess because advertising all seems toxic. So, like, I, I, don't, I don't blink at a... At a, at a you know a, a black sitcom like like the idea of uh, of a of a nice blue collar like this he's a working man and he's got a family and, and of course you don't have to like diversify your all black cast and I don't know it's like I just I just swallow that all down and go well, well yeah what else are we doing who cares what the fuck it's re- like try to reflect life and try to cater to an audience but when McDonald's does an all black commercial it, somehow it just like it makes me feel I guess because all commercials are already even just a regular Pringles commercial with a rainbow cast of people not popping or stopping or whatever they do and the, <laughs> the you know the librarian they're, saying they're, they're, they're popping and not stopping <laughs> <laughs> do, no flavor in this library shh <laughs> Going up. Who's, who's having flavor <laughs> in the library? Well, woo! Titties. Glasses off, titties. Because fuck women. Fuck them. <laughs> I am so offended by the racial non homogeny in, uh, in uh, commercials, but, but hey, if you want to sell me a beer, put it right between a pair of tits. <laughs> Uh, of any color, really, because I'm not—I don't see things through that lens. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at a big round pair of fake titties of any color. I'm progressive. Uh, what is going on? Is it go, go on. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's I I I. I I, I, and it's not like when you when you see an all black McDonald's commercial, what is your? I go. What, what is your instinct? What is your reaction to that? I go, Jesus, that's embarrassing and awkward. That's fucked up. Do you, but um, do, you, do you think a black person thinks that's embarrassing that they're, they're being pandered to? I don't. I don't know. And I'll tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to ask if there's a black person in the audience and then bring them up and have them speak for all black people. I, I, that, I because I just I just don't want to do that to that person. 
or and 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 that person that person has a right to feel however they feel and they don't say I, like, like, that's I, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about you. you, you well, you, I, I'm yeah. I look at it and I go. We talked about this last week about how I confessed about my my weird white perspective on these issues that doesn't quite matter and yet matters a lot pers- like like should be reflected upon like that's how my feelings matter it just should be me looking at myself and going like why does this make you feel this way so th- so like i f- the w- the, w- the complicated thing is that all of my feelings have to do with perception of the other when i see the commercial come on i immediately go i think my first emotional impulse is if i were black this would make me feel angry this would, make, right. this would outrage me. Yes, it would make me feel. It would make me hate society. Yes, because I would. I would be going. What do all these people have in common, and why do they? Why are they? Why is this corporation telling me? Why is it? Why is this a hook? You know, like why are they considering my race to be? And why? And and then simultaneously also saying that my race is necessarily like. Con, you know, of course it's fucking hip hop music. Of course it's. You know, and the announcer is like, he's not. He's not an uptight black guy. They exist, but he's not like a. You know, it's like the voiceover role is like. You, I don't know the fucking voiceover guy in the McDonald's commercial is like, hey, you know what time it is? <laughs> it's like it's always got that like oozing with fucking d- d- nighttime DJ sexuality. Like, I don't know. I, I, I on one hand I would maybe, be like, maybe, maybe that commercial is not targeted towards black people, but to white people. Like, like oh shit. That's a, that's actually a really good point because they're all very attractive black people, and they, yeah, maybe the white person inside you is like, fuck society. I'm gonna do what black people do. <laughs> I'm so angry at white corporate America. I'm going to go eat a fucking Big Mac with my thin little white lips. Nibble, 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 nibble. Look at me, Ray Kroc. Are you angry yet, White House? Mmm, chicken McNuggets. Uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> But uh, there, there is another part of me, though, that said, like I said, like, like as far because it's not like, it's not negative stereotypes in the commercial. It's you're fun, you're sexy, you're 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 having a good time. I don't know. It's weird. I don't think anyone likes being defined. I think if they if they had a commercial that said like, hey, you're blonde, go come to McDonald's. Like blondes have a good time. Like 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 you know you know how blondes are. After work with my blonde friends, I'm in the mood for one thing: chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Like, <laughs> but so many commercials are all white people. That you you don't feel that that's insulting to white people. That like when uh, it's a, it's unanimously white people in a commercial. I don't think you can insult white people. <laughs> I don't know uh, uh, how to do well, that no, no. except to call them racist. Uh, or <laughs> that's or, or Mar- Mario at the drawing room. I'm gonna I'm giving him credit for that joke. He said he said hey because we were talking about race because I was in there. Uh, <laughs> And Mario, the, the, if you ever go to the drawing room, is that big guy Mario behind the bar? He's, he's Cuban, yeah. And, uh, and he goes, you know what they say about white people, Dan? I said, no. He said, you can call him honky, cracker, peckerwood. Just don't call him racist. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're right. That's the only thing that offends them. <laughs> they get all bent out of shape. I'd love to be called peckerwood. That would be amazing. <laughs> it would make me feel struggle. <laughs> yeah, I am a peckerwood. Are you afraid <laughs> of my wooden pecker? <laughs> you should be. I will mortgage your house and then uh, lie about it. <laughs> and foreclose. Because I'm manipulative and racist and I'm a pecker wood. Careful. Uh, all right. So, so we uh, talked. Wh- about what's the McDonald's commercial targeted just towards Pecker Woods? I don't. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, wh- the ninth hole's hard because it's curves to the left. <laughs> <laughs> so you pick your three wood and you hold your breath and you swing for the clouds, but you know that your stomach is empty. <laughs> I can't believe they got Bob Seger to do that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tomorrow's Wednesday, and as all white people know, it's secret n- no work day. 
So come to McDonald's. There won't be any black people there. Now, in that commercial, what if one black guy walks in on that day? And then he holds up a McNugget yeah. and we're like, get in here! <laughs> So, all right. So, speaking of outrage, <laughs> so I'm playing uh, Arkham uh, Knight uh, on the uh, yeah Xbox, and uh, the after um, that, so okay, so I've played all three of the Arkham games, and then realizing like, holy shit, you know, Alfred as always is helping a lot. He <laughs> helps a lot, Alfred. Like he's he's the point man. He's like. You know, he's like, sir, you should know that those fingerprints belong to so-and-so. Like, he's working a full-time job, like, like running prints and going through crime databases and stuff. But it, and it's just like, and he does that in the movies, too, so it's not just the video game. But it's like, it finally just occurred to me, because I was playing Batman, and once again, Alfred is like, should I send the new bat suit, sir? And I was like, thank you. And he's like, you'll notice the Kevlar plating is a bit of a tweak. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. And then, I re- and then I'm like, okay, uh, w- w- will there be anything else, sir? And I was and I, and I, and I, and I, like, yeah, oh, well, the, the sink is filled with dishes like you're you are a fucking butler we can't hire any more help because every time you touch a goddamn Shakespeare head the fucking bookcase turns into a scuba vehicle (laughs) so we can't I guess me in this 900 room house with one guy I just think like Alfred like must be pretty pissed off like Talk about a guy with you know that that like he must spend his nights like punching walls, <laughs> because because Batman comes home and goes like thank you, and then Alfred's like okay well he probably every night goes like like sends these big hints like well if there's nothing else then I guess I should you know while this was all going on while I was coming up with that antidote for the neurotoxin I I did like I forgot to sweep up the pantry so I guess I'll, I'll go do that and then Bruce Wayne's like okay cool. <laughs> he's his butler for real. It's not like a fake like thing. Like like he's his boss is a guy who pretends to be a bat, but he can't f- he can't even be a fake butler. He's not even allowed. So do you think maybe I could have an alter ego? Maybe by day I'm not a fucking butler. It's crazy. White people have it hard. Not on Wednesday. <laughs> You've been polishing Bruce Wayne's <laughs> candelabra <laughs> and helping him fight poison ivy, but your lips are smacking for that salty taste of a deep fried string of processed potato like substance. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, is it, hey, is, uh, is, is Curtis here yet? Um, no? Okay. The fucking guy. I'm telling you. Thin ice. Thin fucking ice. <clears throat> you know, we have no show. Other than that, Spencer, how's it going? Hey guys, I'm I'm doing just good. Um, let's. Uh, oh, so someone, I'd assume a fan of Harmontown, sent me a Super Nintendo game. I think anonymously it was Mega Man X3. It's worth like a lot of money. So I should have mentioned it weeks and weeks ago. But thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everybody. Now, now to today. I was driving by a place called Kebab Time, and. <laughs> It's all, I guess already you know the marketing's not very strong at this location. <laughs> but Kebab Time had a sign, a subtitle, if you will, for the restaurant, which I don't know if that's common. I guess that's kind of common for restaurants. But it said, no heartburn, exclamation point, <laughs> which is very interesting tactic for advertising. It's like you don't see that elsewhere, like Denny's, not poison, <laughs> or like... <laughs> It's also totally irresponsible. They can't say that. That's yeah, that's completely down to your own constitution. Like, <laughs> That's like that Yelp doctor saying, you definitely have ADD. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it, it would be like if they were like, no cancer or like something. Like, it's, you can't determine these things. Cancer's not a good place to go. I found <laughs> that out. Hey, uh, uh, I have a new segment. Uh, uh, uh. Do, do you? <laughs> it's called Dan. If, if you don't have a segment, don't lie about it. It's called It's called Uber Confessions. Uber Confessions. Yeah. Sometimes you're in a car, but you don't want to drive because it's too far, or you're too drunk, so you have someone else drive you, and they're Armenian. Uh, 
my first Uber confession. I have two Uber confessions tonight. <laughs> my first Uber confession is that is that every time someone drops me off at my house and says, "You have a beautiful home," my first reaction: panic. <laughs> That's my first confession. Value my candor. Don't punish me for it. <laughs> my second Uber confession is that I just finally realized I was looking down at the bottom tabs. I've been using an American Express card uh, uh, to call Ubers since I decided to not buy a car, which was a long time ago. And I have been like fucking flat, like, so I, I and there's a little tab down there with the American Express card, and it says, uh, "Pay with this card." And then I notice another tab next to it that says, "Use points." I'm like, "Use points." And I click on it. <laughs> I, I have 1.07 million membership rewards points, <laughs> which translates to ten thousand seven hundred and sixty-six dollars worth of Uber rides. <laughs> which means I will I. I mean, I, I, I haven't done the math, but I, I can never get a car because of all the money I've clearly blown on Uber. Now means I'll be blowing even more money if I don't use all these points. And those, those are my Uber confessions. Yo, yo, it smells like cologne in here. Is there a button, a no cologne button on the app, please? A no cologne button. Oh, now it smells like cigarettes. A no cologne button, that would be good, right, buddy? <clears throat> like, do you ever uh, like park your car with a valet and you get in your car and the valet get, guy gets out and it's just like, my car smells like your cologne for the rest of time. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, that's an occupation where you, you should not be allowed to wear all the cologne. It's unregulated. Here's my, here's my thing. A, a flight attendant should not be able to wear all the perfume or cologne. There was, I was on a Southwest flight where a woman had so much cologne I moved to the back of the plane because I couldn't breathe. And I called the uh, FAA and had her f killed. <laughs> Which I thought was too far. <laughs> well, at least you're... Well, at least there's a, you're I, 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 did, I did regret it. Also, I've lo I lost my voice today cheering for U a U.S. women's soccer team. Um, so, speaking of feminism... Uh, Aaron hired a guy to clean out our garage today because there's like a lot of there's that, a, that is feminist. There's a lot of like she's uh, like the, the Gloria Steinem of uh, of hiring people. <laughs> the garage, the garage of my home is like it's it's the back and side walls are all dirt as high as the garage's roof. Like it's like, it's kind of like an underground garage like and like years and years the house was built in 1929 humble brag not a humble brag just a brag the the uh the the, the all the water is like all the water has just been slowly like seeping into the walls of the garage and the thing's ready to fall apart but i had so spencer helped me hire like these, oh yeah these landscaper guys like dig these trenches and they seal over. anyways that's not really important to the story the, i the, think it is we got the garage <laughs> We got the garage, which always, if you, if you went in there and, and, and took a whiff, you'd be like, I'm certainly going to die of black mold. Like, oh, hum, by hum. the way, oh, whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa. What everybody, was everybody get out. Everyone get out. <laughs> if they can come back in, we're going to start the show over. What was her name? The poor young lady, the actress that, that uh, she, uh, Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy. Do you guys read about that? It wasn't as publicized. I keep spitting on you, Willie. You're in the splash zone. Sorry. It's just vodka from my mustache. <laughs> like, I took a bath today. It's Epsom salts and vodka. Um, and a, just a little bit of a, a and fraud P. complex. Um, just, a, just a hint. Um, the... Um, you know, everybody, everybody kind of characterized... Oh, she, she died and it was kind of characterized as drug overdose and stuff. Her husband died... Uh, he they, they had black mold in their shower. Jesus. They died of the same thing, and because they, I mean, fucking yeah. horrible the and terrifying. It, and ever, there's nothing good about that. There's no silver. Try to find the silver lining in that one. Yeah. Uh, What's really terrifying is the symptoms of uh, mold poisoning can lead from like anything from like headaches to stuffy nose to like bleeding eye sockets and then death. And so it's like, oh, I have a headache. Oh, I'm dead. Like, yeah. 
like just normal maladies. And you you go out knowing that if you're me, for instance, that everyone's gonna go, oh, he was an alcoholic. <laughs> Like, like that's what killed him, and I'm gonna be like, no, my, that's you guarantee I will haunt your asses, <laughs> and I'll be like pointing at the black mold, and everyone will be like, oh, it's Dan Harmon, he's, 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 he, he, there Point must be gold the buried over there. <laughs> no, it's black mold. <laughs> it's not gold. <laughs> you can only Texas hear there's, tea. <laughs> yeah, there's oil in the. <laughs> That's, that's, that's why ghosts are so misunderstood. You can only hear their vowels. <laughs> they're not saying boo. They're saying... They're saying uh, Drew. <laughs> they're saying Drew. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're saying chew. They don't want you to choke like they did. Uh, 20 times. It seems excessive, but... That's it. That's it. The ghost is just murmuring at me. Um, the all right, black mold. Okay, so yeah, so you would go in my garage and be like, "Oh God, this is a death trap." Uh, so we sealed sealed it off on the outside. Big, big expensive landscaping job. And then because we did that, now today Aaron hired a task rabbit. Are you familiar with this? To come and like help clean out the garage. So he goes up. So there's a bunch of stuff in the storage there. Big cardboard boxes full of stuff that we've put into cold storage up there. All water damage because of the water that's seeping through. So I wasn't down there. Aaron came up and reported this to me. That the guy reached up, touched the first box on the top left, and it disintegrated in his hands. And, and a thousand porn magazines just <laughs> <laughs> flooded like Stanley Kubrick's blood elevator. Just... Just, just nothing but, but like ten years of pre-internet obsessive compulsive hoarding of porn. Yup. <laughs> and I, I, I was trying to explain to Erin. I was like, you don't understand. She's twelve years younger than me. I'm like, I'm like, there was before the internet. Like, you never knew if you were gonna see this lady again. And you're, and and she's like, then why buy more? And I'm like, well, because you're done. And then you need more. And then. And, uh, like, why put it in a box? I do, because I put it in a box before the, the internet. And um, and the funny thing is, that I realized, like, like yeah, because then remember, guys my age, like, like, like when the when you first started, like, really, every, we all had like a folder, you know, somewhere hidden away, uh, where it was like the same instinct. It was like you gotta hoard this porn, but it's everywhere, and it's like. Do you, do you realize the reason that folder is so full is because the porn will never end and you don't need it and like and now finally I've caught up with the rest of the world we're all like we're just a wash in porn like why would you ever save anything now, why do you still have those boxes like why not like throw those out because not only were those boxes filled long ago they were also like packed away long ago so there were just boxes that were those boxes were those boxes were still sealed you know, before I moved into that house, and then you just the, you just take the boxes with you. And you had a folder, like a, like a little like Manila folder, that was uh, pieces of uh, porn that you had torn out. Yeah, because I would try to consolidate. I'd be like, okay, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like archiving your hard drive or like compressing it like a zip file. They're like, okay, well, what's really? Well, let's get all the redheads out of here and like got it's becoming a it's becoming a space problem. It's becoming an actual <laughs> physical you, space problem. You, you had a closet that was like like. Floor to ceiling, just Playboys and stuff. But you had this one like pretty full Manila folder. So I, I was le leafing through it. I'm like, wow, you, you really like redheads. And you're like, what? And you went, oh fuck, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had no. I just went with my my gut, yeah. and oh, they're all redheads. <laughs> it's probably it's you know it's face blindness. You go like, oh, their hair is. I noticed that. <laughs> I go by hair and eyebrows. I didn't know that was Dave Klein. We were arguing. So he was on the camera. Is that Dave Klein? Uh, uh, you know, or or any guy with blonde hair and a beard, because it could be anybody. And if it was if, if Dave Klein had dark hair, I'd be like, is that Spencer? If he had red hair, he'd be in your folder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> uh, pleated skirt. <laughs> like like let's, let's give him a little something. The, um, the uh, it, I, I was watching True Detective and uh, Colin Farrell has a mustache the thing and then there's that one flashback where he meets Vince Vaughn and he doesn't have a mustache I'm like who the fuck is this guy now <laughs> oh it's Colin Farrell just without one thing above his lip and I just like static 
because he doesn't have. I need if you all my friends look weird. Like Jeff wears those suits for a reason. Like I, I go by props. I need you to have like a hat or a, like a monocle. You're, you're or saying like crazy you're, thick eyebrows. Are you saying I wear suits so that you recognize me? Yeah, yeah. I think you unconsciously know that you will. You, <laughs> that you you you're at risk of like blending into the. I, I always thought you were a narcissist, but that that's that's too far. That's too fucking far. Uh, I, I, I'll prove I'm not a narcissist by, by, by taking a back seat to our guest, Curtis Armstrong. I saw. Yeah. Also, Dan, b- before, we say, before we say hi to Curtis, I want to say thank you for that great feminist tale you told us. Uh. Yeah. Speaking of feminism, I have a lot of porn in my garage. You're, you're really on top of my. Are you like my jokes agent? <laughs> like, hey, look at this joke. <laughs> I, I, I said women's soccer. You said, speaking of feminism, you told a story about having a lot of porn magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Funny. Because <laughs> it's not feminism. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Jeff, Jeff loses his sense of irony when he's when he's when, when he when he drinks a little bit. Remember when he was so angry about chain zingers? <laughs> you're that you're was not st- still am still am Dan. Well, <laughs> I'm too drunk to even talk about it right now. <laughs> I, I, sorry, Curtis. We're, we're that's all right. That's I, a rude way to bring out a guest. No, it's a fine way. I'm used to it. But <laughs> <laughs> I was also thinking because of porn in your in your garage because I I I. I was, I kept porn in my did garage. You ever, at did one you ever point. have that conversation with your wife? I did actually, but the thing that people don't realize, especially if you're with someone who's a lot younger than you, is that um, it used to be difficult to get porn. I mean, you had to you had to go into a store a and store. face a person, you and sometimes it was a young woman like your own age oh. who was working in the store, and you had to buy your porn. And actually look at someone, as opposed to doing it in the privacy of your room. That you never, know? I never saw. I couldn't even see that. It I was did always that. like a. My guy was always like a. Like, like a, a really like a, horrible. Like a Vietnam vet with a cigar <laughs> in his ear. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I always thought they like kind of like yeah. profiled for those jobs <laughs> as, a, as a way of guaranteeing sales. I always, dr- I always dreamed of that, but it never worked out that way. It was <laughs> like, it was like there was always the guy, you know, with the, you know, the bad you know, horrible face and the drool who was there most of the time. And then when I would go in to get my penthouse, <laughs> it would be somebody, you know, like a 19-year-old woman. <laughs> and, that's, just, that's just bad business at an adult bookstore. Ab- yeah. Oh, I never went to adult bookstores. Uh, I would only go to, I would sh- go to regular sh- bookstores that had the section in the back where everything was covered up. I think you went, you grew up in a bigger city than me. About, that's possible. <laughs> that's that's possible. something that could sustain that in their economy. But I kept them for years. I found them constantly. (laughs) After a while, I didn't want to go out and buy them anymore, so I just used the same ones over and over again. There was, there is a someone should study this, and and, and no one ever will now because we're now in this digital age. It's like it's sort of well, (laughs) yeah. This is anthropology we're talking about now. But there's some there's some kind of useful (laughs) data there about the human mind, the male mind, the sex drive, or something that and the visual relationship with it because there to study. How big does the pile have to be, assuming uh, one wank a day? Uh, one, as if um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making simple numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as I was jerking off in St. Ives, I met a man with seven brides. Um, the, the, I don't, I don't want to get into that situation. The, how tall does the pile have to be, the theoretical pile, before the stuff on the bottom? becomes new again for a guy. Oh, that's a good question. Because that, because that phenomenon would happen. There were, there were times when I would think, this is, why are you doing this? You're a hoarder is why. You're like, you, 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 you're, you're, you're a weird hoarder and, a, and, a, and an addict, and you're, like, you're keeping this stuff out of some strange. But then, then, sure enough, at some point, the hoarder's worst nightmare is like, oh my God, what if I need that ball of string or something? And you're right. like, oh my God, what was that? What what, what, what was that, that one? What, what did that lady look like? She was playing the pinball machine. Right, yeah. She had the cobra boots. and Yeah. And then if you can't find it, it's like a panic. Like, you're like, where is Margaret? Yeah. 
Yeah. And what I found was that they were usually, the ones that I had were generic enough that I would have to make up whole stories. <laughs> so after, I didn't need that big of a pile because it was actually a great exercise in, <laughs> in, in storytelling, yeah. basically, that, that, that after a while I'd go back to the other ones and then it would be a whole new story. She'd be French now. <laughs> Yeah. I'd met her on a train. <laughs> and now it's just a big free-for-all. I know, and now it's so easy. You kids today, you don't know how good you've got it. I used to jerk off uphill both ways to school. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you had to work for it back then. You had to hunt and gather. That's right. <laughs> um, I wonder about the female side of it because there's the myth that women aren't visually stimulated. There's the myth that women... I'd be, I'd be willing to bet, but I'm also w very willing to be wrong about this. I'd be willing to bet there's probably a huge difference in the amount of, uh, of, of porn that, that, that women consume, et, et cetera. But, but I've had enough conversations with enough confessional women that, uh, to know that, that, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a myth that they don't fart and they never watch porn. And, you know, it's like they're, they, they, they do both. They usually at the same time. Um, <laughs> That's a stereotype that does hold up. It turns them on for some reason. To they, that's why they don't like w when men fart because they they think farts are really sexy, <laughs> but only when they do it themselves, and they and they don't want anyone around because their okay. farts sound like a beautiful like glass flute, <laughs> and um, it's like it's uh, Tolkien esque. It's like. Uh, <laughs> If, if, a, if a man hears a woman fart, he'll be drawn to the ocean and he'll drown himself. <laughs> and they don't want to do that to us. Because they're one with uh, the tide. Right, right. <laughs> and the road goes ever on. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> But uh, I, I am curious about the female perspective on not only porn in general, but, but, but more importantly, the fact that now it has changed from a world where you, you used to really have to be dedicated to a choice. You know, you had to take physical action to seek out uh, pornography at some point. It's changing into a world where, no, everyone's private life and private thoughts are sort of like, you know, their That's own right. business yeah. and they're all digital now. Has that, and we'll never be able to measure this because how do you ask people and how do you measure it? The, the, but, the, you know, have women increased their uh, pornographic uh, consumption? Have they, have has their outlook changed uh, as a result? Have they, you know, like there's all a million fascinating questions that only, only... Only uh, the, that I can't answer. Only, only, only Thor can answer in heaven. Um, <laughs> I'll explain my religion in a, in a minute. It's <laughs> sort of a fusion of pop culture and uh, evangelical Christianity. It's a, I want to be a Christian, but I don't want to read anything except comic books. So uh, when you die, Iron Man uh, weighs your soul against uh, Thor's hammer. <laughs> I'm not surprised Dave Klein is a Thor fan. Um, so did you? So did I take that to mean that you did you, did you marry a, a younger uh, lady? I married a younger. Yes, we've talked about that. Yeah, probably. the the. But First you... wife was older, actually. Second wife is younger. Ah, you old dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I mean, did you did you? It's just I, I was talking about. I don't know when you got here, but sir, I, I was I I threw out my back yesterday, and I. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. That's yeah, all right, baby. The <laughs> the. I was listening to a 90s alternative uh, station while I was soaking my bad back and they had a like a hip uh, <laughs> hip pain commercial for the on the 90s alternative hits. Anyways, I started to feel old today, not necessarily in a bad way, but like I was just curious like thresholds that you've crossed where oh. d d like <laughs> if you recall any uh you know, I don't know, major events. Like I remember punching the dashboard of my car on New Year's Eve because I had just turned 26. And I was like, I'm wasting my fucking life! <laughs> and I physically punched the dashboard of my car until it broke. Like, because wow. I was like, 26 fucking years old! What have you done? <laughs> and I was screaming it to myself alone on New Year's Eve. You were alone on New Year's Eve? That's probably what I was mad about. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to make it about... 
progress, you know, my, my industriousness. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's really sad. I mean, I did, I, you know, I usually went to the movies on New Year's Eve. I, I didn't have any, I don't remember any, like, you know, moments of sort of huge uh, threshold experiences where I was, you know, smashing stuff or, or anything like that um, because of a threshold. I mean, I used to do stuff like that, but not for any reason. Oh, wh what, what did you smash stuff for? Oh, just, you know, to get stuff out. And, you know, I used to, <laughs> when I lived in New York, I used to throw knives into the wall. I would, I had a wall that was where I would just, you know, late at night, throw knives into it. Ki kitchen mm -hmm. knives? Just steak knives? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was, uh, but that I, I just did that be to kill time, really. Yeah, I used to, I used to, th I used to throw knives when I was younger, and uh, Aaron got me some throwing knives, but I don't have the time to like, set up a target or anything. And That's but why I used the wall. It yeah. was just <laughs> didn't have to set. Throwing knives up. is very, very, it's very relaxing. Well, it's something when you're in your twenties, you feel like you're doing something cool and. It's phallic, and yeah. you're throwing knives. I was going to say it's like very it can't be any. You figure that it's something you know that that cool. Right. People did right, you know, in like a tavern over a flagon of ale. Exactly, <laughs> but really, all you're doing is taking your a little metaphor for your ineffective penis and fucking a wall with exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> because you're just like any other piece of fucking garbage. Oh God, yes, I know. <laughs> I did know. you uh, destroy that wall? Was that Pretty much, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was an apartment that you wouldn't notice uh, in particular, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, yeah. You know, you do those things. But I, I was not, uh, I didn't smash anything because I was getting old. Oh, wow, I really got through my whole list. This is going to be a terrible show. <laughs> There's French rappers staying at the Air and Airbnb next to us. I mean, I could start ripping you off. You mean when you're down in uh, San Diego? <sighs> no. Uh, the uh, Oh, d thank you. God damn it. Uh, Jesus, we have lots to talk about. San Diego. Uh, we're going to be at San Diego next week. Thank yes, you. you are. I read uh, about that. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, Kevin Curtis? I'm going. There, I'm going there, but not when you're there. Oh. I'm going earlier. When? I'm going Thursday. We're going to be down there Thursday, but not when we're doing. The, you mean not when we're? Yeah, doing not the show. when you're doing the show. Um, yeah, Paget Brewster's going to be down there, but she's down there. She said, uh, how, "You're not there till Thursday, right?" And I said, "Yeah. How early are you supposed to go?" And she's <laughs> like, I, "She said she's going down Wednesday." I'm like, "What are you going to help a TV guide set up their yacht?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't understand. It starts well, it's such Thursday, a right? social thing. It's an amazingly social thing. I was actually going down there because I got invited, because I've never been to Comic-Con as a fan, and yet I'm a huge fan, and I want to go to Comic-Cons as a fan, but then I always get wind up getting tagged, and I never wind up actually doing what I want to do. Usually I go there because I'm selling something like everybody else. You know, Wait, when you say tagged, you mean like... I mean, uh, you know... Uh, you know they uh, spot you. I, yeah, because I'm wandering around, right. and they think I'm there for Comic-Con right. as a, you know, like I'm selling something. Right. But actually, <laughs> I'm just there to look at things that I like. And uh, so this time, I've been invited to go because I'm a big fan of Orphan Black. Ah. And they're down there, and they invited me to come down. Oh. So I'm going to go as a fan to Orphan Black. Wow. But then I'm also going to see, Thursday night, the Baker Street Babes, which is a, an all-women's Sherlock Holmes group that oh. I'm connected with. <laughs> What's this Sherlock Holmes group? Well, it's a group of people who study the sacred writings. Oh, they study. Okay. Yeah. And they're, cool. And, and do they it's all women. It's a new group. They formed in New York uh, as sort of a cheeky response to the old guard Sherlockians in New York. And um, they're going to be there, so I'm going to go down and play with them. But that's what happens is you go down, and, and uh, that's what Paget's doing. She's going down to just, you know, play with people. Mm-hmm. I... I <laughs> Is it is it a performance the 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 Sherlock no. people uh, that you would play? They've got a booth and stuff, and you know we're just. So when you say play, you mean literally just. Play I mean just like hang a, out, yeah, because I know them from New York. Uh, so you're yeah, and and it, if you ever want to get away from the you know and just float freely through the crowd, you know you got to graduate to the 
You're going to dress like a stormtrooper or something. I know, I know. I was going to do that, and it, this all happened at the last minute, so I, I don't have time to put the costume together, yeah. or I would have done that. Um, what would you go as if you could go as any costume character? I was going to go as um, as one of the characters that Tatiana Maslany plays in Orphan Black. I was going to actually do... I wasn't going to just cosplay for the first time. I was going to drag cosplay. <laughs> and I was, go I was going to play Helena, who's the psychotic killer. And um, But then I realized I had to do it properly, and I didn't have time to do it properly. So now I just say, the hell with it. I'm going to wander around, and whatever happens, happens. Aaron so. is uh, uh, supposedly cooking up a, a little uh, combo costume for us that I encouraged Really, her, her to do. Yeah, I, I hope she can pull off, and she's she usually tends to. Um, what is your show going to be down there? Where do you do that? I mean, uh, how th do you do th that? Funny, you should ask. We're going to be at the so at the tin roof. Yeah, tin roof. Yeah, in the gas lamp district. Gas light, gas lamp. Gas light. If you get, get, get to the gas light, you've gone too far. You want to go, <laughs> but it's yeah. still a lamp. Yeah. yeah. Um, but not it, all the way to the light bulb. That's way too far. Um, that you're in the if you get to gas town, you're in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, it's at the tin roof and the gas lamp light, and uh, it's uh, on Sunday night. So stay the extra night if you can. The it, there's still seats available as far as I know, but it's a good sized crowd. It'll be a good show anyway. The uh, but here's incentive if you need it. There's going to be Aaron's been making like merchandise and stuff. There's going to be. A lot. Of, there's going to be like limited edition uh, MC John T-shirts. I guess. I guess in order to make them truly limited edition, we will we'll only sell them that night. Um, and uh, and really, the only reason we'll sell them instead of giving them away is because we couldn't make enough to give away and then bring them on the bus. So we'll just have them there available. Uh, uh, and then there's other. And I think there's another T-shirt she's working on. And I know there's like a print like of a uh, like a shadow run. Poster. Yeah, it's made by the same guy who did uh, the D and D line art drawing from the first tour. It's Anthony Suarez did this uh, Shadowrun group of uh, the gang. And I think there's going to be f like a free Rick and Morty th poster that you can yep. get to. Th th and and, uh, and and the drawing is Doctor Friend Kumail, or should it more rightly be Curtis? <laughs> it's oh. Kumail. It's Kumail. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard. It's all right. I yeah. understand. I, mean, I think I think it's really funny to imagine this Kumail troll, but then it's your voice coming out of it, like <laughs> I'm a doctor. You know, I I really like that mental image personally. Yeah, so. it's good. It's good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, come, come, come there. Come, come, come all. Come, come everywhere and bring your scarf and shawl. I'm the little show promoter and I'm three feet tall. <laughs> come, come over there. Come, come to the south. Come, come on your feet. Come, come in my mouth. I'm a little show promoter. I'm three feet tall. I'm a little elven man that lives in a tree. All I do is promote shows, all that I see. Hey! Please go to see Rob Schneider at the truck show. <laughs> he was in Dukes of Hazard, now he's nowhere to go. Because his car had a racist flag on it. I'm a little show promoter and I wear a bonnet. It was my mom's idea, she made me a baby. I want to fuck her or kill her, or maybe. <laughs> I... Wait. I disagree. Wait. Th th three feet tall sh show promoter, why do you want to fuck or kill your mother? <laughs> you try being born three feet tall and not having fucking psychosexual issues <laughs> with your mother that made you wear a bonnet. Were you listening to the lyrics? <laughs> I live in a fucking tree. I just... That would fuck anyone up. I'm like... Th okay. If, if, if that's if, if you have that much pent up rage, what what made you become a show promoter? I need that hug you can only get from a stranger. What the fuck? <laughs> why, why not be a performer yourself? Why not like go into actually being in the show? Why only promote other people's creativity? Look at this scar on my face. Oh shit! I didn't I, I didn't see it. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for saying that. You, know, you, you were facing the other way. Oh. I, mean, I like to be close to talent, uh, and I like to help it, and uh, I don't feel comfortable on stage. It's did, not a choice that I make. Did you, did, you, did you ever try when you were younger to be on stage? I, I dabbled. I, 
did, you know, I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I'll fi- I'll be on stage. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do, I'll do it if you want it. But I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm not one of those people. I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> I think those people are crazy. <laughs> I don't have to. I like to promote it. I like. I like. I like. I like what I do. I think what I do is creative. <laughs> um, why why are you only three feet tall? Is that a con- conge- conge- congenital thing? Or? I made a choice. Uh, <laughs> At a very ill-advised fair, <laughs> that I would not—I would I tell people don't go. Um, there's a lot of questionable vendors there, and uh, I did get my name on a grain of rice, but uh, also I was—I uh, had uh, most of my uh, lower torso removed. Uh, I thought it was—I uh, thought he meant for a picture. <laughs> Oh, so, so you're not just a, a, like a little person. You're actually no. just, you're a regular sized person with no legs. Yeah, I paid for this. <laughs> is the fucked up thing, you know? So I go. So you can imagine I'm I'm a man with no country. I I I go to little people uh, conventions. Actually, no, I don't anymore. Uh, they're fucking assholes to me. Uh, and uh, I think you know how your people treat me. <laughs> So I uh, do what I do. I hang out. I'm not bitter. And uh, I promote shows. And I, 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 you know, whenever I start singing, people start clapping automatically, which <laughs> makes me feel... Now, uh, can I ask you a question? And like, this is off the record. Uh, are you excited about the Harmontown being in the, the Gaslight or Lamp District? Or, I, or is that you just, like... Like clocking in, doing your job, singing the song. A good promoter remains objective. Uh, you know, if you uh, like, I always tell people, um, your craft is what you do. My craft is promotion. So, for instance, I just finished. Uh, you know, frankly, and this isn't going to win me any popularity contests, but what the fuck is? Um, <laughs> I just finished uh, doing some radio spots for a Ku Klux Klan rally, and um, we we actually have audio of that. Let's, 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 Let, let's, uh, Dustin, let's roll that clip. <laughs> come one, come all, come to the Ku Klux Klan. I'm going to print some crosses and talk about minorities being bad and color being red. I have a Ku Klux Klan. You should come to our rally. I'm the Grand Wizard. You should come. To the, and we're going to wear white and our hats are pointy and... We're going to march around and jump around and have good times. And there's a daycare center if you bring your kids. And there's horseshoes. It's 9-11. It's 9-11. It's 9-11. Yay. Uh, I forgot to ask you. Uh, last question. Last question. Three feet tall. Show promoter. <laughs> Well, what's your name? <laughs> so we can have a T-shirt. <laughs> Ty. T Y. T A Y E. Were you Were you born T A Y E, or is, is that Is that you were You reinventing yourself? Uh, my given name is Jonathan Ty. Brigston, my father Jonathan was a narcissistic asshole, so I go by my middle name. It is no less my name. It was the only way to tell me from him when you called my house. Is John there? Oh, which one? Who subjects someone to that? I go by my middle name. What, what, what was the booth where they cut your legs off at the fair? Uh, ti- tiny, tiny, tiny you. Exclamation point. <laughs> and it had pictures of people, and they were their given height, and then, the, and then next to them was like before or after, and they were smaller. I thought it was gag photography. Oh. So now, you, you didn't wish you were actually smaller. You thought it would be a, a photo. I thought, it would, I thought I would walk out of there uh, with a photo. So they removed your legs? Um, they took some of my lower torso, d- enough. You know, you have a small intestine and a large intestine. They took, they took 
most of my large intestine, took some of my small intestine and moved it down there to take its place. <laughs> then he took s a tiny bit of my small intestine because it's smaller and you can't live with l most of it. Uh, gone. Um, they, 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 they cut my, f my thigh and my, uh, they cut my legs off at the hip cut my thighs in half and my calves in half and then took oh. half of each and hinged them with these uh, uh, with my own kneecaps and then did this, a similar thing with my well they didn't do anything with my arms they just wanted me to be is, 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 <laughs> is, is tiny me still in existence? Or did, tiny you tiny you, sorry <laughs> And here's the thing that I'm not telling you, because it embarrasses me and makes me the villain of this story instead of the victim. But I've told my story and no one cares, which is why I work in promotion now. <laughs> the truth of it is, on my way into the fair, Burning Man, <laughs> I ran over a dwarf family. Uh on the way in. On the way in. Parking was hard. I don't know if you've been to Burning Man. Yeah. It's, they, it's all about being a hippie and all this stuff, but it's fucking hard to park. And it gets frustrating, and I was a different person back then. Um, See, I ran over a dwarf family. I got out of the car. Did you, did you kill them? Or, or they, did they survive? I got out of the car. <laughs> Sorry. I ran to the only remaining living dwarf. <laughs> was this a, a child or one of the adults? It was or? an elderly woman dressed in, I guess, what I would describe as shamanic attire. <laughs> as I reached for her to ask if she was okay, if she had insurance. <laughs> her hand gripped my face and her toothless mouth hissed, Shorter. Do you and think, I laughed it off. Do, do, and, do, 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 you, you must have thought she's just a big Stephen King fan. Yeah, I, I, said, I said, that's ridiculous. Let's get you to a hospital. And then the stupid me, and this is the part that's really embarrassing, when I saw that booth, I said to my wife, wouldn't this be hilarious given the events earlier? <laughs> so yeah, I deserve it. Yeah. Is that what you want to... That's, that's the conclusion, everyone, that here's the story comes to. I stopped telling it. Uh, so I'm in promotion. I like to focus on other people. It's a when little embarrassing. When you, go, when you go into Tiny U and you're in the booth and, and it's not a photograph thing, there's actually a surgical procedure that happens. <clears throat> do they knock you out? Or do you, are, you, are, are, you, are, you, are you alert during this procedure? <laughs> Okay, you're going to drag every embarrassing detail out of us. I, I, I'm I was, only asking because this is, this is riveting shit. Like, this, is, this is very... I was on peyote already. I was at Burning Man. I took peyote. But that's why I hit the Dwarven family. I was, I was on Wait, every drug known to man. Was, there was no police came? There was no like, like inquest? There's no or... cops at Burning Man, bro. I, I've never you want been. cops? Go to, go to the G8 summit, motherfucker. <laughs> So okay, so, so you're on peyote. You go, you go in a tiny you. Peyote, mescaline. I I I put a uh, a uh, uh, tiny uh, Pe peyote and mescaline at yeah. the same time. Uh, it's called it's cover they, covering your bases. They call it a curveball. <laughs> you do those at the same time. I had I take you know three Ritalin and I think like just a little bit of a little bit of a couple tutors of coke and. Uh, some poppers of Amol and uh, a little bit of, of uh, VHS head cleaner to dilate my sphincter, uh, just in case. Back then, I cared what, 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 how what big they, it was. What, what do they call Amol nitrate poppers and VHS head cleaner? I, well, Amol nitrate poppers, is, 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 it puts you in the mood. I'm not saying, is, is there a nickname like Curveball for, for doing... Oh, doing those both? That's, yeah. just, that's just called a garage. <laughs> It's, so, so you walk it opens in, you up and then you, and you, with the urge to host a car. Okay. So you, you're, you, 
you, you, you're driving down to Burning Man. You're on a curveball and a garage. You, a couple, a couple tutors of coke. Oh yeah, that's just just a cute, just to take the edge right, off. Fuck that. <laughs> you, 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 you murder a family of little people. It was. Uh, the, it the was cops called. Don't, the cops don't come because they're not there. They're they're, they're at the G8. Uh, you, you and your wife go. Wow, fucking so high right now. Uh, you, oh, there's a booth there called Tiny You. You go in there. Who do you meet? Like, what's the person that works at? Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to know everything. About, first of all, why isn't there like a like a Dateline on Tiny You? <laughs> Like, why have this, this, this terrible company like not been outed for? Clearly... They conduct their business in the back alleys and burning mans of the world, and they get away with it. This is something I've been screaming about, but no one wants to hear my story. And when I, when I, as you, as you've noticed, when I get enthusiastic about anything, everyone starts clapping because I'm fucking. Yeah, yeah. It's hard being me and being dehumanized. No one takes me seriously. It's like I'm a leprechaun all the time. And everyone just keeps clapping every time I have an opinion. And I, I, I somehow enable it by talking in rhymes sometimes, but I don't try to all the time. This is exactly what happened in, in, the, in the courtroom. And I left. I left. I stormed out. One of, one of the problems is because my legs are made of half femur, half calf, m- when I storm out, it looks like dancing. And, of course, they didn't do it precisely, so one leg is shorter than the other, so I dance in a circle. So I, I start saying things I'm passionate about. Everyone starts clapping. I get mad. I want to leave. I'm dancing in a circle. And this is my life, so I'm in promotion. I'm in promotion now. And I'm not bitter, and I like it. <laughs> my, my name is Ty Brigston, and I'm a new classic Harmontown character that is really offensive. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Ty. Yeah, okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, morning, morning uh, zoo team. Uh, uh, let's get to Morge out here. <laughs> Dur- Demorge Brown. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, Demorge, because, 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 not because you're black, but because you're my black friend. <laughs> uh, that I am. And I, and I, I know you, 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 you do not, you're not an ambassador of your race. Far from it. Um, <laughs> the things this guy does. Um, <laughs> the, but, but, but I just personally, you personally, how do you feel about the, the when you see a fast food commercial that's like... Targeting. You realize that I've been in those too. Have you been? I know. With Joel, <laughs> you know all those Burger Kings with Joel McHale. I'm the black guy in those ads. But being the black guy in, uh, but I'm talking about the ads where literally everyone in the ad is black, and the soundtrack is like kind of like it's, it's a running. It, it's been a running thing with me because there are certain ads that have black people in them, and they're just ads with black people. And then there are ads that are black. Uh, and the best example I can give of this is I had an audition once, and I had an agent who was like, I'm gonna, I know you've had four today. I'm going to send you on a fifth. Uh, <laughs> you got to go because I can't believe this is real. <laughs> and, it was, and I had a clause in my thing. Like when I first signed with them, they said, uh, is there anything you won't do? And I said, I won't do cigarette stuff and no KFC. <laughs> uh, and this is when... <laughs> And she said, it's a KFC thing. Just go. Please do it for me. You'll never, I know, just go. And you'll see what I mean. And so I get there, and there's two ads. There's a black ad, and there's a white ad. And the white ad is that there's a guy who's got a yellow Corvette, and there's a girl next to him, and he's eating chicken fingers, and she's like, oh, I just want to try it. I just want to get in it. And he's like, yeah, babe, I know you do. Uh, And ultimately, she's talking about the chicken fingers. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
That's like an O'Henry Henry novel. Was, she thought he was talking about the car. Yeah. <laughs> the black ad uh, is incredibly different. <laughs> And the room is different. Everybody's in the same room, but the white people are sort of just hanging out, chatting. And then there are these black, and I know that these are actors, these are stage actors, people who know the story, <laughs> dying laughing. They're sitting in their seats, and you see these people going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to eat that chicken. And we're going we're gonna to eat that chicken. And I get the script, and the script says, it opens with a description, the THA boys are watching the game, uh, Mama's in the kitchen fixing up some kitchen fresh chicken because they were trying to take the word fried out of Kentucky Fried Chicken and it was so it was KFC. And then apparently what happens is the mom the wife of one of the three guys watching the game comes in, sees the mom in there and gets jealous. She's been shopping, shopping. Uh, <laughs> and then she gets upset. So I'm looking at this, I'm looking at these guys, and then there's three of us who go in a room and the guy sets up the audition, the audition is like this. Um, three guys, we're going to do the ad three times, once for each of you guys, and I'm going to give notes. The cast directors are give notes. Uh, the first guy gives his best shot, and the first line is, the woman comes in, she goes, what are you guys doing? And the guy's first line is, the line is written, eating kitchen fresh chicken, and the guy says, eating kitchen fresh chicken, as subtly as best, you know, as he can. The guy gives notes, and he says, uh, no notes to him. To the wife, you should be really mad. You've got you see this mom is in here and she's in your territory. So you know I don't know if you've ever seen Rolanda, but you got your neck's got to pop and you got to. And mama, um, if you could just really make that chicken for us so that we get. But anyway, go. And then a second take, they come around to come to me, and I've already decided I'm going to do this snagglepuss voice for the line. <laughs> so, I, so they come to me. <laughs> And then she says the line, and she's markedly upset and, you know, glistening a bit at this point. And I say, eating a kitchen fresh chicken. <laughs> Guy comes over, no notes for me. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if you've seen Rolanda, but you've got, the, uh, like the women, they get upset. And, you gotta, uh, and Mama, honestly, with the chicken, uh, you know, maybe if you open up more, we'll see more of you so we can do that. The third guy tops me. He does this. He gets my chicken! <laughs> and, a, and the craziest part about it is, I get a callback. <laughs> I go to the callback, that dude is there. What? Not the other guy. What? It, it, so I'm like, and so I look at this, I go, there's got to be somebody in the room that said, I want to see these guys again. Yeah. We're paired together. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's definitely an inside yeah. job there. So I get outside. <laughs> yeah, but I get out of the room because I can see them. They're, they're there, and the client is enjoying their time in L.A. They're loving their time in L.A. So they're ordering Peking duck and then mad because, what do you mean they have to call ahead? It takes eight hours to make Peking duck, some shit like that. Uh, and so they're very much like they're the people who wrote the ad or approved it or did whatever. Yeah. And I'm looking at this guy, and the guy goes, you going to do the same thing? <laughs> And I said, yeah, I yes, probably I am. am. <laughs> and then the door flies open, and this Allie McGraw woman walks out, live, lovely, riding boots up to here, a white fisherman sweater with a blue marijuana leaf on it, doesn't even look at us, takes out a cigarette, takes a drag, blows it straight into the air, then looks at us out of the corner of her eye, smiles, and goes in a room, and I go, that's the wild card. And I go, and I bet you anything, there's a black guy in there, and he's probably wearing a polo, and his name is George, <laughs> and he just wants a corner office, and they probably said, oh, shit, run it by George, and George said, oh, yeah, it's great. And we go in the room, and there's a dude in a lavender polo sitting in a corner <laughs> with a bristly mustache, and his head's down, and he's flipping through notes, and he looks up, and then he looks down right away. And we did the same thing. Uh, they called me to give me the job, and I was like, what? "My, my agent goes just so you went, uh, kitchen fresh chicken I, I did, in the in the room with them." I said, "A kitchen a fresh a chicken," <laughs> with no intention of doing the job. With no intention of doing the job. What obviously. the fuck is happening? I have no idea. I really don't know. I don't think it, ultimately. I don't think it matters. And I think even if they recognize that that's what you're doing, they will. They realize that on the day, if you're the actor they think you are, and they think very little often 
sometimes when they're making those types of ads of actors, they think, well, we get them on the day. They'll do the the, the actor will do the thing. The you Asian think, will make you, you think there's thing. full awareness of what's going on there that they're a little somewhere in the production company or somewhere somebody's knows. I something. have I have I'm 42 years old. I'm lucky enough to have been doing shit for 20 years that involved like directing people, like tweaking performances and stuff. And I have on at least at least four occasions had to ask a black performer to basically black it up like because it was because it was like part of the I, I, no I, murder he perhaps you were like i think i think i think you need to more you think you need to you need to do a thing and it was just i i, I, but, I was but, doing like straight reads on the lines but there's always like this brick wall where it's like we both we all know what's going on like it's like there's this uncomfortable yeah. moment it's almost like a reverse handshake where like 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 J- jordan peele like like came in and did the uh like one of this like time monster and it was like the, the the dialogue was written like we wrote it for like Key and Peel, and it was like the the idea was like these these fourth dimensional time monster creatures come in and their their dialect is like they're very black and and but 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 like very and it's and it's not my kitchen of fresh as, chicken <laughs> as in the bu- but you know you talk about those ads and you know like for example Adolf Caesar one time when I was learning to get I was learning I had a wonderful voiceover teacher for commercials in Boston, and she gave me a Don Buchwald audition tape one time, I think, and Adolf Caesar's voice was on there. So it's every black ad ever from one of the greatest actors of all time, and you'll recognize, well, it's the guy that said, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Oh, yeah? That guy. And he had, like, a BC powder, aspirin, like, aspirin powder ad, where he's like, you got a dirty, low-down, rotten <laughs> headache. <laughs> <laughs> every, ad, every ad was amazing. And he's in an ad. I saw this only one time during the Grammys when I was a kid, and I don't know where this ad is. If they find it, it will go viral. It was a black McDonald's ad I think targeted at the Grammys with James Brown in it, but only for a moment. And it's black kids in a McDonald's going, oh, they run up to the show, and it's like, James Brown concert, sold out. And they're like, oh, man, we didn't make it in time. <laughs> hey, fellas, look across the street. There's McDonald's. We're going to Mickey D's. <laughs> oh, it's all right. <laughs> when there's so not there, enough like, James what are you Brown. Get? I'm going to get a Big Mac. What are you going to get? I don't know, but I'll know when I get up there. And then they, they're waiting in line, and the door this flies a, open. So far, this is a great commercial. The, the, <laughs> this is why it's, it's I so don't long. know why I only saw this it's once. It's like a mammoth the, play. The door flies open in the last second. The door flies open. James Brown comes in, the entire thing on one leg, and he goes, Ah! It's a good time. For the great taste of McDonald's. No. And then the guys high five, end of ad. And then while it's going on, I think it's Adolph Caesar's voice at the end. It's like, you know what's up. Get on down. <laughs> To Mickey D's. <laughs> okay, so original question. Because, because you, you, I you said, can find that Because ad. you, you, you got to get up to get down. So it's forget so- as an actor. Okay, so very all, all the, you were in the trenches with, uh, on the actor side. As, can you compartmentalize as a viewer? When those commercials come on, what, what, um, what happens to you in your brain? Well, you rec- like for, I was a kid. I recognized it immediately as a black ad, and I put it in my black ad trunk. Uh, which is you see them all, but you know you see them all. What I love was like they were markedly low risk and they were markedly worse on average. It was always oh it's black grandmother's black birthday. She's buying a black Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope she gets her black loan. Like it was always that mama try out the bucket seats. You know it was always that kind of stuff as opposed to just other ads which were subtle and weirder and stuff. But what was great was there were other ads with black people in them that didn't even target race. Like there was a. A, a Little Caesar ad or something. No, no, it was, a, it was the same people who made the Little Caesars ads. Made an ad for like a, a sale at a uh, like a department store sale or something like that. And uh, they cut to all these different people who are like, I, I wish I had known about the sale. And then they go to the sale. And they cut to this one black guy who's in the ad. He dominates the ad. He, and he just, he's a hot dog vendor. And he goes, I'm holding my weenie and poof, my woman was gone. <laughs> And that's and that's like a not a not it's not a black it's just the, the ad is just people everywhere go to this sale and this guy steals it just by being himself like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm. These are the old little Caesar ads, the ones that had the dog, and like and different ones where they were like really odd and strange and arch. So a jury's out. Yeah. No, um, I mean they're horrible. They're, they're like I think that they're I think they're horrible, and I, but I think what's happened is. We're all starting to get the clearest 
picture. It's the same thing about soccer, perceptions of soccer and that kind of stuff. And like, as I've never known a world where soccer didn't rule and everybody was into it and it was a thing. And I grew up along most people who I think for a while, like, oh, it'll, it'll never catch on. It's like everybody I know played it. And in black, there's a world where I know that everybody, my relatives, my friends, their relatives, they buy everything that everybody else buys. Our consumer dollar is worth everything that everybody else's is. But also, people made fun of that movie, Rachel's Wedding, because they're like, no combinations of people eth of any ethnicity exist like this and do these kinds of things. That's all I ever knew growing up. And I knew, grew up around all these people. These perceptions of the world are now... Uh, commonplace and so you get ads where it's you know black ads that are subtle and delightful um you get ads that are that are targeted to everybody but are primarily um black just by ethnicity because they're putting a black family on for the first time or a black husband and wife or couples of mixed es ethnicity that's where it gets and confusing that kind of is because when you go like what 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 is television's role and what is the uh that's what always like like makes my brain turn into a balloon it's animal because i'm like on you know Nor norman lear started doing sitcoms that were like hey what if you know what if what if we treated uh this segment of the viewing audience as if they also were human beings which entails something that any on, on any other day you could go like well that's also you know like like, like the, it right. just it just twists my fucking brain and i'll i'll, I'll go to my grave awkward they should just put awkward racially obsessed awkward can't fuck fuck up on my grave and i i, I, I just spent just his life trying to capable, figure it out we're the whole all of it is all about the fact that we're capable of so much more our brains are capable of holding all of it in and we don't have to necessarily continue to generalize to get wider to understand uh, uh everything on infinite detail we can actually stay on macro and and just take everything in at at its own detail and say you know like you look at the when Tiger Woods was first becoming a thing and he's like look my my mom is Thai my dad's black but there's also mixed race parentage in me of, of, of other things so you're telling me that you want me to tell you what I am why don't you just ask me about the golf game and not worry about that shit and which is you know, that's like why the transgender movement might be the 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 Christ of this you know yeah thing. That's, that's because that's, because there will never be a I shouldn't say this is going to I'm sure this will get twisted into something inflammatory. I, I just like like but b b believe me, I'm just what there, there will never be a there will never be a such a it's never going to be like look out the window at all those transgender people, senator. You know, like 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 there there there's going to be I mean there's 700,000 uh, you know uh, out or out 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 uh, openly transgender people right now and there's you can probably there's a lot of people. I'm just saying like we can't keep waiting for this. They're, they're like this little tiny key that could unravel the whole thing because it, uh, the the um, John Oliver just did this uh, piece on his show about the whole transgender thing, and it really just again like flip flopped my brain about everything because like we're it's one thing to talk about this culturally, but now it's like there's laws they're passing laws in different places that you have to use the bathroom that corresponds to the genitalia that you were born with, not. The gender that you identify with, so they're and they're running ads for like these local referendums that are like they'll show a little a little girl going into a women's room and then a dude with a baseball cap and a goatee looking around and then going into the women's room after her and saying this is what you're voting for or this you know because because there's because the idea is that if you identify as a as a the, the idea is that that guy in the baseball cap can say. I identify as a woman, so I'm going to go molest a girl in the bathroom, like, like as if that's that's the slippery slope we're on. And it, my point is, like, there's a, like, like there's there's torturous things happening to people who represent really the end all be all of like the final thresholds that we really thought we could call thresholds. And and w I think what you're saying is that like that macro statement, like we can live in the macro, we have the capacity for it. We're primates, we we can do it. And uh, and, and the the guy, the guy in the four agreements said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh boy! Our, our brains are designed to experience everything at the same time. And we're, we're back. Not, our brains are our brains are not designed to have. They don't have to always have like this this flashlight beam that only shines on one thing and thinks about one thing at once. We can think a million things at once, and the and we can we can definitely think like well like let's for instance you could you could you could definitely decide as a society to go. Well, let's make sure everybody's happy. Like, like you could you could build that as the bottom foundation, and you could build everything else on top of it. But um, we're we've, we we're living in a world that was created like 
so long ago by people that didn't even see these days coming when these questions would could we would have the luxury of answer asking these questions but but the the i don't know i just got excited when you s you said that because i was thinking about that piece and like feeling the guilt inside of me and going like oh my god well like 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 that's what this transgender like <coughs> concept is doing to people right now is is like we're all going um oh I don't know. I've heard myself say out loud, like, oh, come on, you know, like about various things. Like, I thought that's where you could draw the line. Like, well, give me a break. And it's like, well, where, why are you drawing the line there? And it's like, like, well, take that line away and take that line away and take that line away. What do you think the worst case scenario is where everything is just how people want it to be? Like, 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 like what, what do you think would happen? Um, and and um, I just wanted to... Uh, Co-opt what you were saying and turn it into a transgender piece. So, <laughs> uh, but I feel I feel no, like that's but the is skeleton it, is it key. Television, is the redefinition of television one of the things that's helping that? Because it used to be that there were only certain programs on, so there were only certain <laughs> shadings of people that you saw, and then you would meet. You'd go out in the world, if, especially if you're adventurous, you leave your town, and you meet these people who whose only experience with somebody like you is never. They've never seen anybody like you. But what they relate to it via generalization is, uh, oh, Raj on what's happening or something like that. And I think, oh, this guy must like this and this. And if I refer, I still to this day, uh, if I go into a Foot Locker or something, this is not to call them out, but it's happened every time <laughs> I go in there. You know, and, I, and, I, and I, they just poke there and I poke my head in and they're like, How's it going, sir? How's it going, sir? Hey, bro, what can I do for you? And it's yeah. like, ah, and this is not, this is yeah. not, you and know, logo, I'm not, this is not the logo bullet. is literally black and white. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think they're it's having not, they they there want. was a Foot Locker. I went to see a movie and I walked past a Foot Locker. I didn't even go in it. And they were giving away uh, Michael Jordan cologne with a bonus <laughs> prize. And the guys talking, and I can hear them in the walk up talking to everybody. I already know in my head, A, I love you, Michael Jordan, but I'm not going to buy your cologne because I have David Beckham's cologne. But. <laughs> Uh, but I'm walking past it, and the dude, and the dude, uh, it's called Instinct, by the way, and it's amazing. It has a, mag it has a magnetic cap. Are, are you wearing it now? No, no, no. I'm wearing a combination of other stuff. So <laughs> I, wa I walk past, I walk past it. <laughs> are you going to give us a, a breakdown? It's not, Is not that on the, not on the wrist today. Yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's probably faded. It's very subtle. Um, <laughs> I think I'm in love. The guys at the table. <laughs> Did you make it back? <laughs> the guys at the table turned to me and said, try Michael Jordan cologne today? And I just, I said, guys, no, I'm not. And then before I could finish that, the, 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 guy, the one on the end said, you get a free basketball. Whoa! Oh! Because they were giving away red and black Michael Jordan basketballs for the thing. And I just looked at him. I walked over and I go, if you ever in your lifetime ever see me again, do not speak to me or say the word basketball to anybody around me within a 300 yard radius are you out of your fucking mind and i just sort of walked up and that was just my i was just pissed it was a rage moment i didn't need to do it right but, but you recognize but you know that what that is obviously since it was part of a promotion you could you're guaranteed you know that they weren't but they offered nobody in the walk up to me a basketball oh. As, as an incentive oh they were picking and yeah, choosing yeah it was in a beverly center they never or beverly yeah the beverly center it was like one of the, like never but I mean, I'm the last guy in, and the basketball became part of the incentive. And I was just like, man, maybe the word wasn't basketball. Maybe it was free. I don't know. But there's no part of that that unlocks the key that makes that right. Um, I want a free well, it basketball. Was like, it was like you could. <laughs> <laughs> I would love a free basketball. Dude, get over there. <laughs> but, you, but you're saying they wouldn't give me one, right? Uh, they wouldn't offer it to you, but you would get it. It's part of the deal. Oh, I for mean, real? Okay, yeah, yeah. They, the cologne would be the thing. But they didn't, they didn't put that in the pitch? No. Okay. But Not no, to it would be the, 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 in, the, the idea would be you can turn down the cologne, but you can't possibly turn <laughs> down <laughs> the free basketball. <laughs> QED. Uh, yeah, so sorry, it's, sorry. it all comes down to dehumanization. It's always that's always the theme, and that's why again, it's, it's like the, uh, that's the again the skeleton key aspect of the transgender thing is because it's it's people going, I choose this even though it's it's uh, difficult for me and all this stuff. It's uh, it's it because it's it might be our final invitation to realize that all everything leading up to it has always been about dehumanization whether you're laughing about people being grouped together with certain characteristics or something like that the final thing is like we can do all of that anytime we want as long as everybody understands that we could that, that every individual you see is always an individual and you can't make any assumptions about them um and 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 it's being hammered into our brains and the and the harder the hammer gets pounded the more like 
the more I feel myself, like like I, I, my system goes into a shock, and then I relax, and I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> like got hammered in. Like keep hammering it and hammering it and hammering it until I can finally like look around and only see individuals, and never st- stop get shake this thing where we're thinking like like well, you know, the Irish. <laughs> and it's like, like, why? Because it comforts us. You know, it gives us understanding of a world full of people. And people scare us. And we go like, you know, you laugh with your friends and go like, ah, that fucking, that fucking Irish. You know, he's Irish. Blah, blah, blah. I thought I was Irish for 20 years. I just found out I'm fucking British. Um, anyways, <laughs> the, uh, all right, let's, let's, let's move on. We did, our, we did our, our weird Springer's final thoughts segment of the, <laughs> of the thing. Um, so so I, you, I wonder if in, <clears throat> like in an upcoming weeks we're going to see more of Ty Brixton. <laughs> I hope he comes back to the show. Um, all right, so yeah, and then speaking of <laughs> individuals and dehumanization and stuff, and we've had this ongoing <laughs> conversation. But this is one of those nights we've had nothing but men up on stage, and I, I think, and she doesn't. This is the important key. She doesn't have to play Mercy O'Donnell uh, uh, necessarily, but uh, we should get. We need we need one helper up here, right? Yeah. And, and I and I say make it a lady with my proactive uh, uh, campaign. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you spoke up. That's enough. I mean, <laughs> uh, come on up. Bring, if it, you, bring uh, it up here. Right. It's important to my uh, to my relationship with my wife that it's not because of the spirit. It's because of the just because of the volition. What's your name? Darcy. Hello, Darcy. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, everyone. All right, so we got <laughs> do, do, we got enough people, right? Yep, we got enough people. <laughs> Darcy, you have an awesome R2D2 tattoo on your left arm. Yes, I do. That's, Thank that's you. It's very well done. I also have Bender, and I also have. Thank you. I have to take off my clothes. I just. I also have the. I have tattoos. <laughs> what's, what's your weirdest one? My my weirdest one. Yeah. Uh, probably the. Shit, man, I don't know. None of them are super weird. I have uh, my, my bender, probably. It's do, a do you have a tattoo that you regret? I asked, I asked my brother. My, my, yes, My brother has 20 tattoos. He, he, he regrets none of them. Oh, um, you, you yes. Have, you have one when, you I, take when I was back? 22, I got divorced, and I got a, a, a back tattoo in Japanese that means freedom. <laughs> so, yeah, one day I'll get it covered, and I'll be all right. <laughs> like a tramp stamp? Yes, yes, tramp Free- stamp. Freedom, I love it. Freedom. I just realized freedom. that... There might be somebody like th- I guess that that hasn't seen the show before, and we haven't explained what we're doing. These Manila folders are coming out. And they're like, are are are, are they going to eat me? <laughs> it's tax time again. <laughs> <laughs> are they going to start praying and then dip me into a, a, a cauldron of stew? Darcy, you're hip to the jive, right? You, you, you know what our shadow run is, right? Uh, Vaguely. N- Yes, I'm yeah. a little behind because I have a lot of podcasts, but I uh, I do know what Shadowrun is. You have a, you're on a lot, a lot of podcasts, or you listen to a lot of podcasts? No, <laughs> I wish. No, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. What's, your, what's your favorite one? Well, God, um, I know I love Harm in Town. I got to catch dead authors. I'm in town. I'm from out of town, so this is my first Harm in Town, and uh, that's why I was that's why, that's why I felt free to shout like Yes, let me let me do it. Um, and uh, and I'm a little shaky, but um, no, I love dead authors, and they're stopping soon, so I was able to catch that. Um, I uh, what I was it? I didn't get the name of that. Dead authors. Dead authors podcast, dead podcast with oh. Paul F. Oh. Tompkins. Yeah, Paul. Oh. Paul, you know Paul. Our friend Matt Gorley <laughs> does it a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I wish he'd been there. I love him. But uh, <laughs> I'll tell him he said so. Yes. <laughs> um, throwing shade. Uh, Judge Don Hodgman. Um, lady to lady. What am I on a lot? Oh, Comedy Bang Bang I love, of course. Right. You know, that's All right. a huge one. So you, yeah. you ready to rock and roll, Darcy? Let's try it. Spencer, do we have a guest announcer? Yeah, this or, one or was recapper, rather? guest recapper John from L.A. You ready to go? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Last run. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll let you finish. What the fuck, Jeff? Wait, start it over, man. That was fucked up. That was fucked up. I, I, I thought he wasn't going to go. And right when I did, whoa, 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 he started talking. That See, was fucked up. You just had the same instinct to go right at the right moment. Right. The yeah. one I was going to go at. <laughs> I mean, it's a natural instinct. You see? You can't, you can't do it. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Last run on Shadow Time, Harmon Town Time Shadow. We last saw the gang at Jim Nightblade's apartment engaged in a standoff with Jesse Yellowman. Jesse, a street samurai and the protege of captured scientist Baldwin Brown, was trying to convince the team to forfeit their pay data, warning of dire consequences if they failed to do so. Nightblade fired his grappling gun out the window for no reason, and then a firefight ensued. Hortigard was able to subdue Jesse with a blast of shock ammo from his rifle, allowing the team to tie up the incapacitated vil vigilante for delivery to their mysterious Johnson. Then Eve Libertine started operating landscaping equipment and farting because this show is improvised. Will the team manage to get paid, or will their employer double-cross them? Find out dot 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 now dot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, Spencer. Yeah, man. And uh, thanks again to John from L.A. As always, I, I, I spent the uh, recap going like, did I talk about race too much? <laughs> so I didn't listen at all, so I have no idea. What we, uh, we, we took Jesse Yellowman captive to give him to our Johnson as a show of good faith. Oh, we got him. Right, right, we, we, have, we have him all tied up, right? He's knocked out and tied up, yeah. All right, um, so let's, let's take him back to the Johnson and say, look, this is what happens. Sometimes people offer us more money to you know, double cross you, we're saying fuck that shit. We got the guy. Sorry, my voice is gone. Hey, uh... <laughs> you know, uh, two things occur to me. <laughs> One is... Is, is this going to be about race? <laughs> no, this okay. is like 2075. Okay. Of, yeah. I'm like 30% Cherokee. <laughs> uh, the... Uh, <laughs> 30? <laughs> um, it skips a generation. <laughs> One is the simple code of the street samurai, which says, that, you know, this guy kind of, I took a, tried to stun him, and he, he was faster, and I kind of feel like a chump bringing him in. The other is, what if he's, what if, you know, he's talking a lot of stuff about how the stakes are, you know, kind of big. <laughs> He's saying we're, you know, we're dealing with something. I, I don't know, man. I keep going back and forth about this. I guess I'm not really a good shadow runner or a good uh, thinker. <laughs> maybe we could, maybe we could split the diff and set the guy free without, you know, totally fucking him over. Our rationale was that we got to do our job, but this ain't our job, you know. Turn and snitch on a fucking fellow uh, sh sh shatter. Why don't we like? <laughs> Here's a pitch. Why don't we take him and leave him somewhere safe with a little note? Like we write a little note that says, "Look, we, we could have turned you over. We didn't." Like, 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 like a warning. Yeah, like, like, like we're we're not going to turn you in and get you in trouble, but you know, like, like, just leave it be, and let him know like that we were cool about it. Why don't we take a look at some of these files with somebody that knows what they mean? You know, too. I agree with that, but also let's take a look at what we're handing over to the man. No, nobody said we couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, 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 what files? I'm sorry. The files we got from Baldwin Brown. Oh, yeah, let's, let's check them out. Okay. Uh, somebody smart here? <laughs> uh, well, Mercy, Mercy, you're smart. Oh, yes. Let me look at these <laughs> files that I have. What the fuck is in the files? Oh. They're on a data chip. You find it's encrypted. Some high-level stuff. It's going to take a real hacker. To figure this out. Hey. Oh, shit. We, we need Hackeye. <laughs> Is Hackeye with us? No. Shit. <laughs> Hackeye, can we... Go ahead. Sorry. Hackeye's not with us. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm talking go, to him on the phone. Go, oh, you, oh, you got him? You All guys right. talk to him. I talk too much. No, no, you talk. You talk. No, nah, let, let Mercy talk to him. So. Hackeye, hey, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? Where are you at? I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, cool. Uh, so, uh... Where's 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 home at? Where are uh, we in relation to your home? Don't worry about that. Oh. How can? What do you need? So we need to uh, unencrypt these files. Yeah. Um. Can I can I send you a, a file then, man? Because we gotta unencrypt this stuff, and it's really really important. Yeah. Just uh, upload it to the matrix. 
Hold on. a joke. <laughs> Hordegard would argue against taking the uh, secret files that we have uh, uh, gone through so much trouble to acquire and then just making them open to everyone to see. <laughs> what I would, might suggest is that if you can convince him to be amenable to the idea, perhaps we could uh, either arrange to have a car sent to him if he could give the specific details and digits of what he needs. Otherwise, I could possibly track his location uh, using some sort of combination of skills. Uh, and uh, mechanisms that I have. Otherwise, uh, uh, but we could get him and bring him to us. Who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking to the group as a suggestion to my I colleagues. Mean, we're, we're sending him an, uh, an encrypted file, right? Like, w is that not safe to send over the matrix? Or? Well, there are other encryptors you're, in the you're world. You're being really uptight about this. <laughs> this is my job and my lineage. <laughs> All right, all right, let's get, him a, let's get him a car. I mean, we need it now, but okay. Is he let's amenable to the idea? I That's can meet you at Hank's last stand. All right. <laughs> let's do it. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go to Hank's. <laughs> 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 you arrive at Hank's Later, last stand. Later, at the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> you pile out of the Uber and into the dark comfort. Of the old moldy bar. You see Hank cleaning his glass as usual. Hawk, or hack guy, not hack guy. Hack guy <laughs> is in the corner, his corner, his usual corner, waiting. Well, we never discussed what we were going to do with pink, pink, pinky yellow man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's tied up in the car out front. Uh, right? Well, it, let, it, let's, did let's we crack a I mean, window for him? My... <laughs> My pitch would have been let's 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 restrain him and 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 put him in the trunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just in the of trunk. the Uber. Oh shit! Yeah, it's an Uber. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, we put him in the trunk of the Uber. We just we say to the driver, leave the like leave the meter running. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Mercy. Uh, All right, Mercy. Go talk to Hack Guy. Give him the uh, give him the encrypted data and uh, talk your talk. Uh, hey, Hack Guy. Hey. Hey, you got a drink? Can I get you a drink? Oh, I'm fine. How's All it going? Right. What do you need from me? Hat well, we guy. need we need you to be hat guy. We need you to do your thing cuz uh we've got s we've got s this data. <laughs> Excuse me. We've got this data chip and we need it uh, we need it unencrypted because I, Yeah, you do. Stuff. <laughs> Give it to me. I'll take it. I'll take a look at it. So I. Well, is there a will they won't they thing going on with with Mercy and Hack Guy? I don't know. Is there? Is there? I don't know. It seems like you guys are getting a little flirty over there. This is my bedroom voice. I go to the jukebox and put on some sexy R and B. And I, I'm I'm at the bar with Doctor Friend and uh, um, and I and I I just I go uh, so what, what do you make of all this shadow running? <laughs> I don't know, man. I have to tell you, as long as I do no harm, I'm okay. It's got to become increasingly hard in this world. It's <laughs> it's becoming increasingly hard now, mm. especially with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turn the music up on the, the sexy R and B. <laughs> there are a lot of things I haven't talked about with you. Right. Hey, listen, it's it's getting it's getting really hard for me too. So you you can you can trust me. Talk to me. Hey, man, I'm like you. I don't think you are, man. I don't think you have a clue. I used to be legit. I fell down to this world, fell from grace, lost my wings. Oh no, I, I thought you meant about me being gay. <laughs> Hordegard, Hordegard goes to the jukebox and plays the next selection, <laughs> which is Luther Vandross. <laughs> Never enough. Well, uh, I mean, Look, if we're going there on the Kinsey scale, I, <laughs> truth be told, it's, I call myself 50-50. <laughs> I'm a little more than that. <laughs> you know, we've been going on these shadow runs for a long time. <laughs> I've been keeping everything kind of low, but 
I have to tell you that I'm dealing with feelings about you. Oh. Oh, shit. I mean, you in particular. Uh, well, uh, I... I'm just telling you, you don't have to say anything. I'm just letting you know. No, no, I, I appreciate your transparency. I, uh... I, uh... I, I figured you should know. It's Please don't tell anybody. It's just between us. Of course, uh, respect nothing more than privacy. That's why I got into this business. <laughs> You know, I'm a precog. I can sense your look and everything about it. Uh, what are I you guys talking about over there? Uh, what you, how's the mission? <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> Hackguy's Hack still working on it. Have we found anything out yet? Oh, yeah. I'm just pouring through this datas. It was, it was seriously... I guess we're all pouring through a lot of datas. <laughs> Gen I gen <laughs> gently, Nightblade. <laughs> gently. <laughs> what does it say? It says all sorts of stuff. It talks about BTL chips, those hot new drugs that kids are using these days. <laughs> talks about the mechanisms by which they damage and degrade the neural pathways of your brain. And it looks like Baldwin Brown has been doing some research on how to reverse that damage. We're talking crazy BTLs. Imagine if you could just do mountains of cocaine all day and wake up fresh as a daisy. That's what they're bringing. <laughs> That's what this research is about. No downsides to drugs. Hmm. So uh, somebody who had these files could either, you know, I mean, what's the, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like if, if you're removing the bad side of, of, a, of a dangerous drug. I don't really see a downside to giving it to Baldwin Brown. No, it seems pretty standard. You just fix these neural pathways in the brain and everything's healthy. I guess the question is... Uh, <laughs> the people that we give this information to, do they want it because they want to use it or suppress it? Well, you know, they used to... <laughs> Cliffhanger! <laughs> Thank you, Darcy. Darcy, everybody. DeMorge Brown. Curtis Armstrong. Spencer Crittenden. Ty Brixton, the embittered three foot tall promoter. I'm Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon. Thank you all. Drive fast, dead chances. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.